Greetings, I'm Demonac, and it's Hearthstone time. So, the new Knights of the Frozen Throne expansion is out, and I finally uh, have a little bit of time to go through the card list, so let's go check it out and just get my random, largely uninformed thoughts about the various cards. We'll do crafting. And just start going through the new set. It's got this annoying thing, this annoying bug right now that like keeps refreshing the new tags on a bunch of your cards for no reason. I don't know why. But okay, so we have starting with Druid, I guess. We have Druid of the Swarm. So you got a one two for two, which sounds really bad. But it's either it's either a one two poisonous beast for two, which means it's just as good as the slug. Okay, it doesn't have taunt. So what, still, 1-2 Poisonous Beast, or a 1-5 Taunt. 1-5 Taunt for 2 is pretty strong early in the game, especially since it probably counts as a beast. So, I would have to say this is actually pretty solid. Like, I don't know how much players are going to see in Constructed, but 1-5 Taunt for 2 is actually quite solid, and later in the game, being able to make a 1-2 Poisonous, it's a threat on the board. There's a good chance it won't get to, like, kill your opponent's big thing, but it might. And it can hide, although it doesn't have taunt, which is in some ways a drawback, it can hide behind taunts, which the slug cannot. Crypt Lord here is a 1-6 taunt for 3. Apparently they're fond of taunt now. Every time you summon a minion, it gains plus 1 health. That's interesting. It is summon, not play, right? So that's, and that's minions that you get from just about any source. It doesn't have to be from your hand. So I'm sure you could do stuff with this to keep giving him more health over time. Like I said, it's not bad, but this is one, a 1-5 one taunt for 2 with an option of something else is pretty good. For 3 mana, the 1-6 taunt is starting to look kind of not as great. If you're comparing him to the, uh, to the Tar Creeper, who's a 1-5 taunt with three attack on your opponent's turn. So, still, I mean, he's a little interesting. I see why he made it, but he still seems like kind of a trash common. Nash is here. It's the three mana th version of the deal some, like, gain attack and deal, and gain armor for one turn thing. So, gain three armor and get plus three attack for this turn. For three, I think I like this better than Bite? I was found Bite at 4 was kind of expensive. And also, Bite was in the same mana slot as Swipe. I can, I'm can. i much more likely to imagine putting two Nashes and two Swipes in a deck than two Bites and two Swipes, which, all, which cost the same. This gives you a little bit more casting cost for Stillian. So, as much as it's an uninteresting card in that it's partway between cards that already existed, it's still... And I think I like this option better than Bite, possibly. But he is doing more for more for your card, so it's kind of a little split there. Strong Shell Scavenger, 2-3 for 4. His battle cry is, give your taunt minions plus 2, plus 2. So it looks like they're... I've noticed they're doing a little bit of mixing up of some of the various, like, class... Not actually... Like, not direct class abilities, not things that were actually unique to a class, but thematic things that were in practice kind of unique mechanics for a class. Like, Mage was the only class that had things that cared about freezing, and now they're adding some freezing cards and some things that care about freezing to the Shaman. So this looks like Warrior was the class that had things that benefited from Taunt. They like give give you more taunt synergy. It looks like they're gonna go for adding a little bit more taunt synergy for the druid as well, which seems reasonable. Did, did uh, Paladin have any taunt synergy stuff? I don't feel like they did. Anyway, but yeah, two three for for four and give your taunt minions plus two plus two. Uh, so unlike the warrior one, which is just two mana, same effect, no creature. This does have the advantage, like, it's not a very good creature for 4 mana, but it is giving you something for your card in addition to the plus 2 plus 2. You can make some use of it when you don't have that. And the fact that they came up with these two sort of chunky early game taunts, if, you're, if you've are if got a 1-5 taunt out there and then you give it plus 2 plus 2, that's suddenly a very serious, like, minion. 
So he's got an interesting, I don't know, um, let's play he see. You have the Fate Spinner, is at 5 3 for 5. You choose his Death Rattle, and it says it's secret. So I'm, since it says secretly, I'm assuming that when people, mount, when your opponent mouses over this Death Rattle, it says, has a secret effect on death or something like that. So you don't know whether it deals, whether the player who played this chose three damage to all minions or give all minions plus two plus two. Wait, is that all minions, like including enemy minions? That is a weird messed up turn. But deal three damage to all minions is pretty solid. I guess. Is it, you use that instead of an abomination? I don't know. Spreading the plague. There's also, I think every class got one of these, a spell that... If some condition is met, it chains it again and can potentially keep going, like cast many copies of itself. So this is use a one five taunt for five mana, but if your opponent, but it keeps going until you have as many minions as your opponent. So if you had no minions and your opponent had three minions, you would get three one five taunts. That's kind of interesting and would obviously combine pretty rough with him. If you could, if you do this and then you give him all plus two plus two, that's an army. But that's a really involved sort of combo. I don't know if you'd want to go that far. But it, that's an interesting card anyway. I don't know how great it is, but it's very controlly. So, Web Weave, you can just, for five mana, get two one-two poisonous minions. I mean, that Poisonous is strong, but they're so fragile. I feel like this is just a little weak for the cost. Like, I think they really like the th the sort of thematic thing that there are all these one, two Poisonous minions out there. I feel like this card would be a lot better if they were one, three. Does that really make that much difference in practice? I'm not sure, but I feel like, I feel kind of like they ought to be one, threes. One, four for, for two of them for five mana they might be they'd be a little bit too tough to remove maybe but i don't know i'm sure like depending on the timing this could still be quite powerful but eh. and then each class gets in this expansion a legendary hero card it's a card that you play during the game to replace your hero kind of like uh replacing your hero like with uh Jaraxxus. so you you have there's a there's an immediate effect on each of them they all each give you five armor, even though they all have different casting costs. So you got five armor, in an effect that's like a battle cry usually, although this one is a choose one because it's a druid. And then they also replace your hero power. Uh, I think I could be wrong. Again, I don't play that much constructed. I definitely don't play constructed at high levels. This guy seems like by far one of the weakest to me. So he costs seven, which is middle of the road. Uh, I think most of them are seven or more. There are a couple who are cheaper. His, when, you, when you play this for seven mana, you get five armor, and you choose to either get two one-two poisonous spiders or two one-five taunt scarabs. Now, getting the two scarabs plus the five armor, that's a lot of control that you're getting there. But yeah, And then it replaces your hero power. Normally, your hero power as a druid is plus one attack until end of turn and plus one armor. It changes it to choose one, get plus three attack, or gain three armor. So that's really giving you two powerful hero powers compared to a normal hero that you can choose between. But when you see the other Death Knights, I feel like this is kind of a crap hero power. Even though just being able to gain three armor every turn is very strong, or being able to get plus three attack and just do that damage is pretty strong, but neither his come into play effect nor his hero power seems very strong compared to most most of the other death knights death knight cards i've to me have either an incredibly powerful come into play effect or an incredibly powerful hero power or both for some of the expensive ones so yeah he seems a little bit mediocre but he still let, that gives you a lot of control for seven mana like i mean the card is probably worth having in the control sort of deck but we'll see. We'll see the other powers as we go along. I think you'll find that this guy. It does not seem as impressive as some of the other ones. Other druid stuff. I, I feel like this is a little bit of a smaller set, which is okay. But, but. Hadronox here. You get a three-seven beast for nine. And when he dies, he summons all of your taunt minions that died this game, or in practice, up to seven of the taunt minions that you've had die this game. 
which is weird because they have so like that could be super powerful. And no matter what, it's probably just going to fill your board with taunts that have five or more hit points because it looks like that's where all the druid taunts sort of go. But a lot of them are like a lot of the ones that the cards that are working with taunts in this set are giving you a lot of like one five taunts or like really weak attack taunts. Whereas if you weren't using all the new taunt cards and you had this guy die and like and bring back a whole bunch of like regular good taunts, taunts that have three attack or like swamp thing, you know, with a six eight taunt and stuff like that, that would be insane. So I don't know how much at nine mana and he's only a three seven and he doesn't do anything impressive till he dies. This feels too slow. I don't think he's gonna see as much play, but I don't know. I don't know the control decks in the arena. He could be pretty strong. Then we have Ultimate Infestation. Sorry, I got a stupid phone call. I had to spend a minute telling the, the scammer that he needs to get a better scam because it's a really pathetic scam. Anyhow, so this I think, figure this is kind of like a, a card in the same vein as the Hunter card that summons all three Beast Companions. Like, this is late game, time to get serious card. The, this one for the Druid, 10 mana, it does a lot of things. Deal 5 damage to any target you want, draw 5 cards, gain 5 armor, and summon a 5-5 five, five ghoul. That's a lot of stuff. Like, it does... You, you compare it to Lay on Hands. Lay on Hands is going to give you 8 life and 3 cards for 8 mana. That is essentially taking your entire turn. Right? Even when you have 10 mana, that's still basically your entire turn. So, it takes your entire turn... But it gives you the five health to try and keep you, or sorry, it gives you the eighth health to try and keep you in the game. Lay on hands has the advantage you can play it a little bit earlier. This thing, though, you can blow up an enemy, potentially. Like you, five damage will hopefully blow up an enemy minion if that's what you're worried about, and gain five armor. And if that's enough to keep you alive, you also have a five-five ghoul and draw five cards. That is a lot of power. So I, yeah, I can see in a control deck using that. I don't know if it's, the thing is, you need to do a lot for 10 mana. And that does a lot. It's kind of unfocused, so I'm not sure if that's actually what they want. But either way, like, you get so much value from this card that unless deck death is your concern, that's probably a game-winning sort of play if you can survive for one turn after. So moving into Hunter cards, if it would turn the page here, the hell. Okay, play dead is very good and fun. Just one mana, trigger a friendly minion's death rattle. You you have a minion that's alive that has a death rattle, you can just trigger it. I like this card, I think it's interesting, and I think there's going to be a lot of fun to be had with it. It's not, like, super overpowered. It's not, like, the, it's not as weird as, like, the one that, like, triggers all your minion's death rattles. And that, that's messed up. This is nice, straightforward, simple card is good to have. Toxic Arrow. This is a weird one. Okay, so you deal two damage to a minion for two mana. If the minion survives, give it poisonous. So this is a, a flexible card in a bunch of ways. Because you can you can use it to just kill an enemy minion, right? If they have two hit points or less. Or if you can damage them with other things and get them down to two, you can just finish them, and that's okay. You get an okay value for your card. But, I mean, if your opponent has a huge minion, and you have one with three or more hit points, you can just zap your own minion and attack with the poison and kill the big thing. So that's pretty cool. Also, these effects like Poisonous and Lifesteal, which is one of the new effects that they've added in, they work on pretty much any damage the minion deals normally. So if you put Toxic Arrow on Baron Geddon, he's going to kill everything but him. When his, when his Geddon power goes up, he's going to deal two damage to all the minions. I'm pretty sure they're all going to die, which is kind of sick. It's a, it, I don't know how good a card this is overall. It's interesting it's flexible in that way. But, I mean, it takes a little bit of work. I'm not sure if it's, just, if it's that good compared to just something really straightforward like Kill Command. Venom Strike Trap. I've seen this used in the arena already. So it's a secret. When one of your minions is attacked, summon a 2-3 poisonous cobra. So this is helping the hunter with the uh, diversity of secrets. Because they didn't have necessarily the greatest things for when you attack one of their minions. 
this is this can definitely mess you up if you're not if you're not planning for this. You really have to be aware that this is an option, especially in the arena. I don't know how much people are going to play with it in constructed because your opponent definitely has a chance to kill that cobra. On the other hand, that cobra is going to get it to attack as soon as as soon as your opponent ends their turn, and if they're not ready for it, you may get an awesome free kill out of this. And they just used one of their attacks to trigger it, so there's a slightly better chance? I don't know. Bear Shark! He's a 4-3 for three, for 3 beast. Can't be targeted by spells and hero powers. He is immensely straightforward, but he's pretty good. He's pretty good. That's like fairy, People like Fairy Dragon is a 3-2 dragon for 2. Beast is a much more useful... Like, well, okay, not more useful. That's kind of a... That's a crazy generalization, but... There are a lot more things that interact with beasts, especially as a hunter, so that's a pretty darn good creature type to have. 4-3 unchargeable? Seems fine. This guy is pretty interesting. So, Stitch Tracker is a 2-2 two -two for 3. His battle cry lets you discover a minion in your deck. That's another thing you're going to see a lot of in this set. Kind of a theme is all, most classes get something that lets them really manipulate their deck more. Something that lets, allows you to tutor for things in old, old-ass Magic the Gathering terms. Demonic tutor, which is, let, which is like, pay two mana, grab any card from your deck and put it in your hand. There is a lot more stuff, and obviously they're not printing Demonic Tutor, because that thing was brutal, and Magic had to stop printing it. Also, it had a pentagram. But there's a lot more stuff in this set that allows you to set up your deck in such a way that you could use a card to manipulate it. So, I don't think in the, I don't think Stitch Tracker is a great example of it. He he's but you could, for example, if you only had Stitch Trackers and three other minion types in three other different minions in your deck, then he would pretty consistently get you one of those three other minions. In fact, if you only had Stitch Tracker st two Stitch Trackers and two copies each of two other minions, you could guarantee, every time you played a Stitch Tracker, that it would give you a copy of one of those other minions. Now, in Hearthstone, I I don't think you'd want to build a deck with that few minions. I think you're probably going to be screwed, because Hearthstone is really balanced, expecting you to have a lot of minions. It doesn't make it as viable as some other like CCGs to play a minionless deck or a near-minionless deck. So this is not a particularly great example of that, but there are still a bunch of these things where you can manipulate your deck and your situation so you can get very specific cards and you know what you're getting, and it could be very strong. One of the like, So this guy, usually he's going to be much more random than that. But even if they're more random, still, if your deck has a lot of minions with good crazy powers and battle cries and stuff like that, or just if you have a bunch of good legendaries, this lets you get a copy of a legendary. He's adding a copy of the minion to your hand, so you could get a copy of that legendary and then still draw the legendary later, which is kind of cool. Exploding Bloat Bat. That is an expensive-ass bat. So it's a 2-1 for 4 with Death Rattle, deal 2 damage to all enemy minions. So, I mean, that's a cool power. And I definitely can see some value to that for control. He's a... I don't know how normally you'd want to play him, though. Like, he's so... His stats are nothing for the cost. Is just that power, and you can't necessarily trigger that power immediately when you want to. But he's pretty—I mean, he has potential anyway. Professor Putricide is pretty awesome. Like five four for four legendary. Whenever you play a secret from your hand, he puts a random hunter secret into the battlefield. So you're just getting two secrets for the price of one. You could potentially reach a point where you just have where there you just can't get any more secrets. I don't remember if you fill up on secrets, if you can only have, like, five or something like that, or just, if you, you may run out of different secrets, because it has to pull one that you don't already have, right? But still, that is a lot of card value, and he's still a 5-4 for four, four, 4, so that is a very solid legendary. Probably because people don't play enough Hunter Secrets, or they want people they want to make it interesting for people who might choose to play more. Corpse Widow is a 4-6 for 5, it's not a legendary or anything like that. It just makes all your legendary cards... I can't talk today. makes all your Death Rattle cards cost two less while she's in play. I mean, a 4-6 Beast for 5 is pretty is fine for a casting cost. 
And that's really interesting, like, making them that, like, that's a lot cheaper. That's not just a little cheaper. So if your deck is heavily Death Rattle based, this could be pretty cool. Or you could just play a bunch of big Death Rattle legendaries. I don't know. But she's interesting. Then we have the one that I got randomly from the uh, quest reward thing, which is not one of my favorite classes to get the legendary for. So Deathstalker Rexstar is one of the cheapest Death Knights. The, uh, the Shaman one only costs five. Like all of them, he gives you five armor. His battle cry when you when you switch your hero to Deathstalker Rexar is two damage to all enemy minions, which is pretty solid. I mean, he only costs six mana. That's like a blizzard. It, but instead of freezing things, he gives you five armor. And he replaces your hero power. So you lose your ability to shoot for two every turn. You gain this Build-A-Beast thing, which I've looked into. So every time you play build, every time you activate build a beast for two mana, you get you sort of get sort of a two round discover. It's kind of like building a spell with Kazakus. It's a little quicker, and it's not quite as crazy. But first, it lets you discover one beast that has some kind of special abilities or card text. So you you could get like that bloat bat, that two one for four that when it that has death rattle, deal two damage to all enemy minions. So we'll give you that. So you choose one of those guys, and I say, if, say I choose that bloat bat. Now it's going to give me a second choice of minion. These are going to be ones that have no real card text, although they can still have like one word abilities like taunt and charge. So it would let me choose one of those guys, and it would add everything together. So if I took the got the bloat bat, and then if I got that shitty one four for three ape with taunt. Then it would add their stats together, so the 1, 4, plus the 2, 1, it would be a 3, 5, and it would get the taunt, and it would have the bloat bat ability. It would also add their casting cost together, it would cost 7, because bloat bat's so expensive, this would not be a great choice, but it would be, it'd be 3, 5, maybe it would be a perfect choice for your situation, so spend 7 mana, and get a 3, 5 taunt with death rattle, deal 2 damage to all enemy minions. Maybe that's amazing. Or, you could, you could potentially get you know, I'm, just, I'm having a I'm having a brain failure trying to think of ones that have like abilities. But say, okay, you could get the uh, you could get the bear shark. Is a four three for three that can't be targeted? And then as your second choice, you get the uh, the charge pig, a one one charge for one. So now for four man four mana, you would get a five four charge that can't be targeted. Damn, that's pretty good. So, the thing is, this compensates for, you know, we have a Hunter deck that is all, like, aggro at the start, and then kind of loses steam in the late game. This, every turn, lets you spend two mana and create a powerful, like, a usually fairly large and powerful card. And, because of the special abilities, I mean, there's a lot of randomness there, but you're still discovering the ability, and the and sometimes you get a secondary ability. So you are able to potentially build yourself a minion that will help you out in that specific circumstance. So that's pretty cool, and that helps to give you more of a late game. I'm not sure that it's as good as, like, I've seen some of the other hero powers in action, and they're craziness. I, he, like, that ability seems to synergize well with being a hunter, so I'm not too against it. I, I still think the druid guy is worse. He seems like the least interesting one, for sure. But, yeah, he's pretty, uh, Deathstalker Rex are, I'm sure he's going to see a lot of play, because six mana is not that bad. Again, he's only six mana partially because you have to spend a lot of mana to use the hero power. This just gives you a card in your hand. You still have to cast it, and they can be pretty expensive. Uh, it also, so it, some of the bigger beasts just aren't options, I think, because it can't, it won't let you build anything that costs more than ten mana. I think all the beasts involved have to cost five or less. But anyway... Then there's the Abominable Bowman. He is a 6-7 seven for 7, and his Death Rattle summons a random friendly beast that died this game. That seems pretty efficient, I don't know. That's like, you get some stuff. 6-7 seven for 7, like, he costs one more than a Boulder Fist, and he gives you back a random friendly beast that died this game. On the other hand, if you play with a lot of small, rushy sort of beasts, then maybe that's not as cool, because you get like a 3-2 or something. But he's interesting anyhow. Move over to Mage. Again, it refreshes all these like new markers for no good reason. 
We have Breath of Cindergosa, one mana, deal two damage to a random enemy minion and freeze it. I mean, for one mana, like, it, it can get rid of your opponent's first turn play. Later in the game, like, it's two damage and freeze a minion for one mana, and if they only have one minion, then it's very effective. But that randomness can potentially screw you, so it's interesting. Ice Walker, a 1-3 elemental for two, and your hero power also freezes the target now. That seems sick. Right, I mean, 1-3 for two, he's, for, for a two-mana guy, he's survivable enough. He becomes much more survivable when you realize that you can just freeze one minion every turn with your hero power while doing one damage to it craziness that way. Plus he's an elemental, which is always good in the after the last set. Then there's Cold Wraith, super good. 3-4 three, for 3. So again, we, we know 3-4 three, for 3 are always pretty decent stats. And if any enemy card is frozen, then he also has Battle Cry draw a card. Wow, he got 3-4 for 3 and just draw a card? That is amazing. It's not like spell piece of crap guy who's like give you a random spell, and give your opponent a random spell. He just gives you a card if you meet your, meet his condition. So that is some freezing synergy, and also he's just awesome anyway. Doomed Apprentice here is a 3-2 for 3, and your opponent's spells cost one more. So it's the reverse of the, like, cheapening Apprentice. Um, I'm sure there's some good strategic value in this. It, it does, it, I'm sure it's annoying, but it's only spells, not minions. I I don't know if this is something I would pick a lot in the arena. It just seems maybe not strong enough, but maybe there's a specific purpose you would want it for. I'm sure in uh, in non-arena, in like constructed play, this could probably mess up your opponent's tempo or combos and stuff like that. Frozen clone, this thing is pretty sweet. So duplicate is out, but because you could control duplicate a little bit too much. But this one is like after your opponent plays a minion from their hand. Add two copies of it to your hand. So there's is you have Mirror Entity where you get one copy in play, or you can Frozen Clone, get two copies in your hand, which means, yes, you have to cast them, but you also get all their battle cries and stuff, so that's pretty sweet. <coughs> I think it's a very good secret. Simulacrum. Three mana. Copy the lowest minion, the lowest cost minion in your hand. That is weird. So if you save this to late game, this would, and you can, if you can get rid of lower cost things in your hand, you can just spend three mana. Does this even go into play? I have to look up whether this goes into play. Hold on, that's like a critical detail. Okay, it 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 does it it makes sense. It's just copying the card in your hand. That's a weird card. So I mean. It is very flexible. You can use it to get an additional copy of something normally you can only have two of in your deck, or a legendary you can normally only have one of in your deck. It is weird, and it's going to sit around until you can set up the right circumstances, but that's flexible and pretty strong. I'm sure it'll see lots of play. Ghastly Conjurer is a 2-6 for 4 that just adds a copy of Mirror Image to your hand. So for 5 mana, you can get a 2-6 and 2-0-2 two taunts. But also it's another spell that you can cast for cheap. So, if you need to cast spells for things. It's interesting. Uh, I don't know if she's that awesome. I mean, that's fairly control -y, I guess, because she can hit some cheap minions and survive. And and you don't have to cast the mirror image right away. She just still does cost four, because you can cast that mirror image later. So, eh. Glacial Mysteries. We're up to eight mana. Put one of each secret from your deck onto the battlefield. Wow. So that's going to thin your deck somewhat, because it sound it. this doesn't say a copy, this is put one of each. So this is going to pull all those secrets out of your deck and put them in there. I mean, 8 mana is pretty late game. You've had a lot of time to draw your secrets, you probably do two copies of one of them just to annoy you. But that is definitely thinning your deck, and that is putting a lot of power into there. It does... Seem kind. Of, it does seem vastly inferior to the uh, the paladin, like six six for whatever, like six or whatever, and get one copy of every secret. That seemed way stronger. On the other hand, paladin secrets themselves are much weaker than mage secrets, and that guy was OP, so I guess they couldn't make it as strong as that. But that is 
Like, sort of a strong card, but it's weird when you start comparing it that way. Uh, I don't know. And Syndragosa, because I always get the Mage Legendaries for some reason. I don't know why. I don't play Mage very much in Constructed, so that's probably why. Syndragosa is 8-8 eight, eight for 8. Dragon, not a big surprise there. That, her battle cry something two zero one frozen champions. Okay. Those zero those guy those frozen champions are zero one with death rattle. When this dies, add a random add like a random legendary to your hand. Like, okay. So she's actually she's giving you two zero ones right now, and then if they die for any reason, for example, if you shoot them with your mage power, you're gonna get more legendaries. So there is some card advantage there. That's all legendary. Not too bad. And Frostless Jaina. And this is where you start to see that maybe those previous, like, legendaries, uh, previous, like, hunt Death Knight cards were not as super strong. So she costs nine, super expensive. Her battle cry summons a 3 6 water elemental. And your elementals for the remainder of the game always have life, all get lifesteal. So that's pretty good. You get this five armor, same as everyone else. So you get a three six lifestyle lifesteal water elemental. That doesn't have taunt. Maybe that's too slow to keep you alive if you weren't in a good situation. And her hero power still just deals one damage. But if it kills a minion, you get a water elemental. And of course your water elementals all have lifesteal. So the amount of freezing, life stealing craziness you generate from this. If you can play her and not die for one or two turns, you can easily turn it into this crazy lock situation. Plus, if you play her while you have some elementals out that are able to attack, you could immediately lifesteal with them and regain a whole bunch of life and get yourself... Like, it's not necessarily that hard to establish a point where you just kind of locked your opponent. You just... Between water elementals freezing everything, and every time you get one of their minions within one hit point of death, you shoot it with your hero power, get another free water elemental. It's sick. She's pretty rough. Paladin, we have Righteous Protector. It's a 1-1 taunt Divine Shield. That feels like a card they should have had a while back. Seems just very straightforward and solid. I have often not liked a lot of their Divine Shield combo type stuff. I, some of it has been pretty strong in the past, but I never liked any of it. This would make me like some of it more. It's very cheap. It works with pretty much all that stuff, but it's the it's the Divine Shield and Taunt for your cheap guy. And then if you have other combos off of the Divine Shields, it starts to get more interesting. I mean, it's just one little thing towards there, but I felt like, I usually felt like they needed a little bit more to make me interested. Dark Conviction for two mana, set a minion's attack and health to three. So they've already had this ability a bunch of in in a bunch of different cards. Now it's just its own separate spell. Just three three a minion. You can take one of your little guys, you can take your Righteous Protector and make her three three, or you can take your opponents like Ragnaros and make him three three and then hopefully kill him because he still deals eight damage with his Ragnaros powers. But yeah. So that's that's an interesting spell. I'm not sure exactly what the use case is for keeping it in. Because, again, it's flexible, but because 3-3 three, three is so middle of the road, it doesn't completely remove that bad thing that you want to get rid of. You still have to kill it somehow. And it doesn't buff a friendly thing all that much. You still have to get rid of it somehow. But it is a flexible card. So, I, I don't know. It's going to be weird to see how much that gets used in, like, the arena and stuff. Desperate Stand. For two mana, you give a minion, death rattle, we turn this to life with one health. It's like the secret, but less subtle. It's also like the shaman card, and way, way less good, because it comes back with one health. This is one of those, this is probably not all that impressive, unless you're using, well, okay, here's the thing. It's, unlike the secret, you can totally control who's going to get this, which means you can make sure that it goes on a guy that has divine shield, or a guy that has a death rattle you want. So in those ways, it is still going to be pretty strong. It does seem annoying that it's like the same as the Shaman card, but just way, way, way worse. I guess maybe if your opponent has like a death rattle disadvantage, you could put this on it so that it would come back and then you could kill it again a second time. But 
Anyway, it's, it's a fine card. It's just the Shaman card making it look bad. Howling Commander, he's a 2-2 for 3, and his battle cry, draw a Divine Shield minion from your deck. So he's going to randomly pull one of your Divine Shield minions from your deck. And this is, again, you get into that sort of tutoring aspect of, like, manipulating your deck. You could play this guy and only have one or two Divine Shield minions. And then instead of being just a guy who gives you nice efficiency, like he keeps your cards coming, now he's a guy who's going to give you a very specific card that you wanted. <coughs> so maybe you have no other Divine Shield minions except Tyrion Fordring. You're just like, I want my Tyrion Fordring every game. You have, with this guy, it's like you have three copies of Tyrion Fordring in your deck. I mean, you only actually get one to use, but in terms of how often you will get him, you'll get him almost all the time. In practice, I'm sure you'd want to play with a couple of other Divine Shields so that you're drastically increasing the chances of getting your Tyrion Fordring, but you also, whenever you get one of these guys, you want there to be a Divine Shield minion left to pull out of your deck. But you could just play with regular amount of Divine Shield minions, and this guy gives them to you. Arrogant Crusader, he's a 5-2 for 4. This is a common ability that you see in this set. He has Death Rattle, summon a 2-2 Ghoul if he died on your opponent's turn. So, the thing is, you put him out there, and this guy, because he's a 5-2, it works pretty well. As a 5-2 for 4, he is quite a threat. So your opponent wants to get rid of him quickly. But they're kind of penalized for killing him. Whereas, if the, the, it makes for weird play incentives. Because now they're kind of like, well, I don't want to kill him on my turn. I want to force you to attack him, to kill him, to trade him for a minion so you don't get a ghoul. But then they're leaving your 5-2 alive for you to do whatever you want, including possibly just hit them in the face. So it does create interesting play and counterplay sort of possibilities. Probably you should just kill him and let them get the 2-2 ghoul, because you can't have that 5-2 running around. But then they got 7-4 worth of stats for 4 mana. So anyway, those guys are kind of cool. Uh, Chillblade Champion is not my favorite, but like you get a 3-2 charged lifesteal for 4. So Lifesteal, new ability they added, is just whatever damage you de the minion deals, you heal that much to your hero. I mean, it's normal healing, so it can't go above 30. So this guy is going to charge out there, and whatever he does, is if he hits a minion or if he hits the enemy hero, he's going to deal 3 damage, and then you're going to heal 3. It's with charge, so he can come out and kill something. But also, if you send him out and you hit your opponent and heal for three, and then if they, on their turn, use a minion to kill him, he's probably going to do his damage to that minion, and then you're going to heal three again, so you can actually heal six out of him. So, as much as my gut instinct is I don't like him, um, empirically, he seems pretty strong. As, like, if you've, as long as you've taken any amount of damage, he's going to be a charge that can come in and kill something. Not super cheap. But you're getting that healing as well. And plus, if you're using him to beat on the enemy hero, they really need to kill him, because otherwise he, they can, he can undo so much of the damage they've done. Light Sorrow, new weapon, 1-4 four for 4. It gets plus 1 attack every time a friendly minion loses Divine Shield. That seems like a hell of a lot of work just to get 4 decent-sized attacks out of that. The amount of like, Divine Shield losing you have to do... I'm sure someone somewhere is going to do big plays with this, but I don't find this to be a very compelling card. I would rather use like a good weapon, like True Silver Champion or something. Even though it gets a lot less uses, it takes no work to get it up to 4 attack. You just play it and it hit for 4 and it does some healing too. Paladin Legend is Bolvar Fireblood. It's like, just like the other Bolvar Full Dragon piece of crap. He's a 1-7 for 5. His abilities are... Feels similar, kind of, but he's improved so much. So he's a 1-7 Divine Shield for 5. And then whenever a friendly minion loses Divine Shield, he gets plus 2 attack. That includes him. When he loses his shield, he goes up to a 3-7. If you got anyone else to lose Divine Shield, then he's probably going to be a 5-7 at some point. And obviously you can potentially pump him much farther. So I think the other ver I think Boulevard Full Dragon, the older version, where he just gets plus 1 attack when whenever a minion dies and he's in your hand... That guy was crap. This guy, I think, has some potential. I don't know if he's really something to be that interested in, interesting and constructed, but he he can do he can do a job okay. 
Blackguard is a 3-9 for 6. Whenever your hero is healed, he deals that much damage to a random enemy minion. So he's not going to burn down your enemy directly. But this guy is very tough. Like, 3-9 for 6 are actually great stats for surviving. And, you know, he can kill some minions as he goes along. But then anything you have that heals your hero is suddenly, like, turning into major, like, crowd control. And that includes lifeguard, lifesteal, right? So you play this guy, and then for th you for 10 mana, okay, this is a 10 mana combo, so don't think of this as really as a combo, but this is a demonstration. You play this guy for 6, you've got your 3-9, and then you play the Chill Blade Champion. So he drops down, which is 3-2 charge lifesteal, hit your opponent in the face for 3, and he'll and then this guy will do that so you'll heal three from the lifesteal on the other guy, and then this guy will deal three to a random enemy minion. If your opponent doesn't have that many minions, it might not be that random, and you might just be able to kill through his stuff by healing. Okay, then we have Uther of the Ebon Blade. His lead his powers are pretty legendary, okay? So you get your five armor. He comes in as his battle cry gives him a five three lifesteal weapon. You gotta think about this. That's a 5-3 weapon is already pretty solid, but every time he hits with that, he's healing 5. So if he's just killing enemy minions, he's probably not going down in health. In fact, if you kill small minions, if you kill like a 2-4 or something, you're going to gain health out of that deal. But also, if you're just beating your opponent in the face, you're now hitting him for 5 and healing for 5. So if you're doing control type stuff, that's pretty strong. Which is probably why his hero power is weird and, like, harder to use. His hero power, every you spend two mana, you get a 2-2 two -two instead of a 1-1. One -one. So, like, that's an upgrade. Okay. But it's not like summoning a random, like, just some 2-2 two -two token. Just some generic 2-2 two -two token. It's summoning a random one, well, it's summoning one of the four horsemen. I want to say it's probably random, but it, it's going to be like totems where... It, I'm pretty sure it won't summon one you already have, because I think they're all, like... Because it's going to consider them unique for its ability, just like summoning totems considering considers them unique for their ability, sort of. So, if you can use this hero power four times without your opponent killing any of your horsemen, you just destroy the enemy hero. If you have all four of the different horsemen, you win the game, basically. That is so weird and counterintuitive. So you can try to play a control deck where you're just trying to kill the crap out of your opponent's stuff and keep these horsemen alive. And if your opponent can't kill through them, you can crush them. But also, if you got out something like the Stronghold Commander or whatever that guy is that lets you use your hero power an additional ter time per turn, you could potentially horseman it out in, like, two turns. You just need enough stuff to keep your opponent's minions dead or taunts to keep them all at bay. So it's interesting to have an alternate win condition like that. Plus the the five three lifesteal weapon is a pretty serious swing. Is five armor and your five three lifesteal weapon worth nine mana? Probably. So then if the horsemen work out or if they don't, it's not as big a deal. At, le at the very least, you're getting two twos instead of one ones, and your opponent has to worry about this crap because. What if they do leave him alive? That would be terrible. So he's very interesting. One more, and then next video... Or no, I did two more classes. In the next video, I'll do three classes and the neutrals. <clears throat> oh, Priest has some really good stuff. So, first off, as a 2-2 two -two for 2 common minion, this is just like, at the end of your turn, give another random friendly minion plus 1 plus 1. What now? Makes the smith guy in the little 2-1 priestess look like crap. Just, it's a 2-2 two -two for 2, which is not good stats. But if you if you have anything else alive, you're getting 3-3 three, three for that. Because you're getting that plus 1, plus 2, fun plus 1 at the end of the turn. At that point, you're getting great value. If this ever stays alive, you can get insane value when you're getting health and the, the attack. Both. That... Is like this is one of those things that your opponent has to kill. Well, if everything in your deck is something your opponent has to kill, they're going to have a hard time. So, this could work really well, and it work really well with say like you play the three four that gives this like if you play this and your opponent doesn't kill it on turn three, 
you play your 3-4 that gives plus 3 hit points or something. So now this is a 2-5. And then it gives it turns around and turns your 3-4 into a 4-5. And that's monstrous start. Th th this thing is really good. Just very solid common there. Spirit Lash. This is 2 mana. Deal 1 damage to all minions. It includes friendly minions. But since this is lifesteal, you gain that much health. So if there are... If, if there are three enemy minions and three friendly minions, you're going to do one damage to all of them and gain six health. So late in the game, under the under some circumstances, this could be giving you ten health or something. I mean, you hope it's not in that circumstance, but it's pretty interesting. And, of course, this works with spell damage, and suddenly can, that can turn really crazy. So this is a very, very good use for spell damage. That makes a spell damage pretty seem way more interesting, right? If you have this plus your Holy Novas now, hold on. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. Acolyte of Agony. This is a 3-3 three, three Lifesteal for 3. Lifesteal is a pretty damn good ability. Like, early in the game, just a 3-3 three, three for 3 is going to probably do nothing for you. Because early in the game, you're probably close to or at full health. But it's still like, every time it does damage to a minion or an enemy hero, you're going to gain 3 health if if you're not full. Later in the game, like sort of mid-game, late game, if this guy comes out and starts doing anything, even if your opponent just kills him with a minion, you're going to get that three health back. So he's, uh, you know, he's pretty solid. He's not all that interesting, but he's not bad. This thing is cool. So I never liked that resurrection card. It was two mana, just revive a ran like bring summon a random friendly minion that died this game. That's really annoying. This costs twice as much, but it's discover a friendly minion that died this game and summon it so you get to choose now if you've had more than three minions die then you don't you may not get the choice that you want to come up but god damn if you can arrange this to just discover first off if you have a lot of like death rattle minions that can work out really well it's obviously not going to work well with battle cry but i don't know i feel like this is very potentially powerful you can definitely get good stuff for it's four mana, so you're probably not getting a huge discount, but getting back just what you need that way. Because depending on how you run your game and your deck, this could be a very limited pool of different things that you're discovering from. And if you're discovering from a limited pool that you control, that's pretty strong. Speaking of strong, Devour Mind. It's Thought Steel, but bigger, and I really like Devour Mind. So, you know, they keep, there's like Sprint costs seven and gives you four cards. That's just kind of too much. Like, you're just not likely to have mana left to do it. It's fairly late game and all that stuff. Also, Sprint is like decking yourself. If that ever comes up, you're going through your deck much faster. On the other hand, Sprint is helping you to get your combos faster. This is just copy three cards from your opponent's deck and put them in your hand. But still, three cards for five mana is a really good sweet spot, I think. I much prefer this to paying three mana for two cards as a rule. I, if I get one, like three mana for two cards, I would rather be playing that later in the game. If I can pay five mana and get three cards, that's pretty awesome, even though I might have a little bit less mana to play them right away. But also, when you have your full ten mana, this still leaves you five mana to do something. So it, you might be able to play something you just got, or something, or you might be able to use something else from your deck and play this. It works pretty well. Embrace Darkness. No, this doesn't do. This doesn't turn you into a warlock. For six mana, you choose an enemy minion. At the start of your turn, gain control of it. So, <coughs> this is like mind control combined with corruption, which is really weird, and I'm not sure how good it actually is. So, you you zap them with this. This is a spell effect that is on that minion. But your opponent still has a whole turn to do stuff with that minion, and then only at the beginning of your next turn do you gain control of it. If you had a way to freeze minions, if you like freeze their minion and then embrace darkness it, that would be pretty good. But then you're doing a lot of effort for this. So I don't know if this is actually the ultimate card. I'm sure we'll see in practice. It might be better than it sounds like to me. Shadow Essence. Six mana. Summon a 5-5 five, five copy of a random minion in your deck. That's very weird, but potentially pretty strong. So if, if you have a lot of... This won't affect battle cries, right? If you summon... If you if it chooses a random minion that has battle cry, that's not going to happen. But 
you, this could this works with death rattles, and this could be getting copying like just any card text basically is not a battle cry almost. So you could get really good powers out of this. It's a six six for it's a sorry it's a five five for six, which is not bad if it gets an ability that you like. So you could get some pretty good stuff out of that. And again, if it's copying your legendaries, good stuff could happen. What the hell is with Archbishop Benedictus, the priest legendary, it's a 4 6 for 7. His battle cry just takes a copy of your opponent's deck. I'm assuming it's only the cards remaining in their deck, not like their initial deck. This almost seems a little bit unclear to me from some cards. I could swear some cards might work off like what was in your opponent's deck. Uh, it seems like most of them do actually just say what's currently in your opponent's deck. So, okay, fine. Whatever's left in your opponent's deck, take a copy of all of those cards. And shuffle them into your deck. What? Like, okay, kudos to you. If your plan was to win through deck death and just outlive your opponent, outlast them, have more cards, this will give you more cards. And this is probably going to be a fun one to use in some of the, uh, like, solo adventures and stuff. But really, like, what the hell? That is not what I want for my legendaries. Okay. Speaking of what I want from my legendaries, de the priest version, the priest Death Knight card, okay, it's pretty good. So he, for, he's eight mana, which is one of the more expensive ones, but not the worst because you can still use your hero power after playing him or do something else. You, like all of them, he gives you five armor. His battle cry is more situational than some of them, but destroy all minions with five or more attack is super powerful. And then he changes your hero power to void form which is shadow form like deal two damage but every time you play a card it refreshes so it's shadow form that you can use multiple times per turn that's pretty rough it's one of those things where if this battle cry the battle cry hits all minions with five more attacks so it could potentially not work with your friendly minions so you might have to work around that but if you get any advantage out of this battle cry, and then you're getting that void form thing going on to finish your opponent, like, car, void form, card, void form. Like, at least this is probably going to go off twice per turn for the rest of the game. You do two damage, play one card that costs six or less, do two damage. That's pretty damn strong, so it's hard to argue with him. Here's his buddy, the Obsidian Statue, which is a gigantic minion that is conveniently not killed by Shadow Reaper Anduin's Battle Cry. Nine mana is a lot. It's a 4 8 lifesteal taunt. So if one minion hits this, you're still going to gain four health. If, it, if they have to hit this with three different minions to do the eight damage to kill it, you're going to heal like 12. So this is quite a comeback card, which is kind of what you want for 9 mana. And then also his Death Rattle destroys a random enemy minion. So this is a pretty serious defensive statue. you, you got to give it that. Also, even though it's got statue in a name, it doesn't have any problem with attacking. This thing is, attacks just fine. And last class for this video, and then I'll do the rest in the neutrals in the next video. And Rogue! So, first off, Boomerang. Boomerang is weird, but kind of cool. So you spend one mana, you, you you deal damage to a minion based on the damage of your weapon, and then your weapon returns to your hand. So this is a way to, like, you're going to get back all, your, you get back your weapon completely. If your weapon has a battle cry, you're going to get to use it again. You're going to get back all the uses of your weapon. You have to pay for it again. But if you're on the last use of your weapon, this is one free use of your weapon and a copy of your weapon in your hand. That's pretty strong. Can't argue with that. Leeching Poison. Give your weapon life steal. Now, whenever you deal damage with your weapon, you heal that much damage. Um, I don't think that's that amazing, but you could use it with the... Uh, I forget the name of it, and I'm not going to... Well, it's not Whirlwind or whatever. The thing that destroys your weapon to deal its damage to everything, that would work with this. That would let you, like, hit every enemy for your weapon's damage and heal that much. I'm, I'm still not super fond of this card. 
here's one of those cards that spawn that chain cast itself. So for two mana, you draw a card. So currently it's doing nothing. But then if that card has death rattle, you cast again. So this will chain until you stop drawing death rattles. If you have here's the thing. If everything in your deck was death rattle, you could play this and draw your whole deck. And then most of those cards would get destroyed because of hand size, and then you would die of deck death soon. But if your deck just has a fairly large amount of death rattle, this could potentially draw you two or three cards for two mana. That's pretty cool. Or maybe more. You know, if your if your deck was like twenty death rattle minions and ten non death rattle minions, how does that work? This is it's interesting. It's it's random enough. I don't think you can really organize your deck well enough to have a great idea how it's going to work out. But it's still it's interesting. The it, this would probably be a terrible card for other classes. But again, you're a rogue, so a two mana spell you could use it to trigger combo on something, and then you're not losing out too much. It's like trigger combo and draw a card to replace itself, and then maybe get to draw more cards. Okay. Plague Scientist, this guy is amazing. So he's a 2 3 for 3. Combo, give a friendly minion poisonous. So this is this is like almost like a mini assassin plant. Unlike the assassin plant, you have to have a minion that is ready to attack. But still, if you play anything, play any other card so that you can get combo on this guy, and you get a 2 3. And giving poisonous to a minion that is already alive and able to attack lets you just blow up an enemy minion. That's pretty awesome. And 2-3 for, for 3, I mean, those aren't good stats, but you're still getting a decent-sized thing for the casting cost if you're able to trade a small minion and kill something. So, I don't know. I think he's very good. It's not like he's crazy. It's not like he's broken, but he seems very good to me. Shadow Blade's pretty cool. So it's a 3-2 weapon for 2. I'm, I'm usually not a big fan of uh, rogue weapons, because you already have a built-in weapon to trigger all your weapon shenanigans, so you just kind of need stuff to buff it. But but okay. The, the fact that this comes in and makes your hero immune for that turn, again, that's not going to help on your opponent's turn, but it is just pay 3 mana, deal 3 damage to anything you can attack, so subject to taunt, but whatever, and then you still have a use of it next turn. The fact that your hero is not going to take damage for whacking something with this is pretty damn good. Even though it's just for the first swing. Okay, Legendary Lillian Voss. She's a 4-5 for 4. That's pretty damn good. Those are good stats. Her battle cries replace spells in your hand with random spells from your opponent's class. Okay, she's weird. I'm... You can do stuff with this. The reason her stats are so good is because her power is weird and hard to work with. But you can definitely do things. Like, you could use the Ungoro Valley things that give you those shitty, like, vines in your hand. The, like, one mana deal one damage spells. Razor Leafs or whatever they are. You could get a couple of those in your hand and then cast Lillian Voss and turn them into random spells from your opponent's class. Which are probably better than one damage, one, damage, one mana. So, that's... She's definitely interesting. And of course you might be able to then combo with the other cards that like benefit you from using stuff from your opponent's class. I don't know if she's that great, but at least she's a 4-5 for 4, so she's not badly costed. Runeforge Haunter, this guy is pretty scary. Okay, 5-3 for 4, which really, like, his stats are arranged in kind of a fragile way, but really for 4 mana, that's not the worst except that you'd much rather he was tougher, but even in, during your turn, your weapon doesn't lose durability. Like, wait, what? So you can just, if you get out a good weapon, or if you buff your weapon up to be crazy good, and then you play this guy, you can kill things, and just you can just you use your weapon forever until he dies, pretty much. That's amazing, but also, imagine if you envenom your weapon. And then you put this guy out. Now, you can stab something to death every turn. You'll suffer damage equal to its attack. Unless you have an illusionist out. But still, 
you could use that envenomed weapon forever, potentially, if you could just control the board so your opponent can't get rid of this 5-3. That's kind of scary. Like, he's, uh, he's pretty interesting. Bone Baron, there are also a bunch of minions that have these, so, like, this skeleton death rattle. So he's a 5-5 five, five for 5. We His death rattle adds two one one skeletons to your hand. That's actually kind of weird. That's not, sorry, that's not what I was thinking of. Because most, for, for other classes, usually you have things that have death rattle, like put two one one skeletons into play. This is, or something like that. This guy's, no, no, add two one one skeletons to your hand. So you can, I guess they're one one for one, so you can use them for a combo and stuff like that. It's kind of weird, but, you know, five five for five. He's not bad. I don't know. He's probably fine in Arena. Spectral Pillager is a 5-5 five, five for 6. Combo, deal damage equal to the number of other cards you played this turn. So, if you're trying to do that combo stuff where you reduce the cost of your cards or whatever you're using and playing with preparation, you do a bunch of, cast a bunch of spells and then drop her down and wham, do like 3 or 4 or 5 damage or something. And then you also get a 5-5. Five, five. I don't see myself using anything like her, but eh, it's it's there. It's an option. Use it to kill minions or whatever. So then we have the rogue version of the Death Knight card. It's a 9-mana one. So you get 5 armor. Your hero gains stealth until your next turn. So first off, it's not as strong as making your hero immune for one turn, but it's pretty close. Your hero is only going to take damage from area stuff, unless your opponent has something to remove stealth. And even then, how many of those stealth things specify minions? I don't know. But yeah. So, you spend 9 mana, you gain 5 armor, and your opponent isn't going to be able to attack you on their next turn. So that's pretty interesting right there. And then, you have a passive hero power. Don't worry, it'll still cost you mana, just differently. So you, every turn... Start of your turn, you get this card in your hand called Shadow Reflection. And initially the card is doing nothing, it's just Shadow Reflection. But whenever you cast a spell that costs 5 or less, Shadow Reflection becomes a copy of that spell. At the, uh, you have, it, it's only good, you can only play it once per turn. At the end of your turn it goes away, so you can't use it to stockpile copies of all these spells. But it still means that you can potentially just cast two copies of every spell that you cast. Or once per turn, you can cast a second copy of any spell that you cast that costs five or less. That is a pretty interesting power. I'm assuming that if, they, if it has combo, that the second one gets combo. So, know, that's pretty interesting for a control a serve rogue. So I'm just going to come back in the next video and we'll do the remaining three classes and all the neutral cards from Knights of the Frozen Throne next time. If you found that useful or entertaining or if you enjoy cookies, hit the like button. And don't forget to subscribe to Demonac Games for more Hearthstone Arena and other gaming videos.